Thanks for joining us for the Member Excite presentation. The Member Excite presentation is informative, interesting to the audience, and showcases the strengths of the presenter as an entrepreneur and their area of expertise. It's not a sales pitch, it's a 10 minute educational and insightful exploration into what they do. And of course, it's exciting. Matt is a zero entrepreneur, for those of you that don't know him, with over 40 years of industry experience. So 40 industry awards, including Business Person of the Year and winner of the Australian Business Champion Awards two years running. Over the past decade, um, Matt has founded and grown a dozen six and seven figure businesses, generating over $100 million in revenue and runs the fastest growing business networking organization in Australia, New Zealand, and now the US. Um, so this is um, really something that's created, you know, there's no original idea, right? So everything that's created these days, it's, it's off the back of something else. Some wisdom that somebody else has had, so standing on the shoulders of giants, or some lessons, experience and learning that you've had in life. So this is a combination of both those things. I've been really blessed to have spent some time with some amazing people. And by spending that time with those people, I've learned an amazing amount of stuff. Uh, but also, uh, I've had the great privilege of having you know, owned a number of different businesses over the past 18 years. Um, I remember when I said back, I was thinking, what is he, 21, 22? Um, so, uh, but yes, uh, 18 years, I've owned a number of different businesses uh, from professional services, hospitality, retail, all different things. Uh, in that time, uh, through learning and through putting into place all this stuff, I've generated uh, over 100 million bucks worth of sales in those businesses. Um, it would be nice if that was the profit I was announcing there at the end of it. Uh, but what I've learned is that if you implement this stuff, here, this drives as well. Um, so here, just a quick poll. Who's been in business for at least 12 months? Raise your hand for me. Excellent. Congratulations. That's most of us here. Uh, congratulations. You guys will pass. Because 50% of businesses make beyond the uh, 12 month point of view. So if you make it past 12 months, you're now in the top 50% of businesses. So congratulations. Who's been here in business now uh, for over five years? Raise your hands. Numbers are dropping. Okay, so five years. You're the top 20% of businesses. If you've been around for longer than five years, you're now the top 20% of businesses. Now, who's been here longer than 10 years? Raise your hands. Veterans? Yeah, so the numbers are totally And that's because, who can have a guess? Tell me, who are these? What, what percentage of people? Not, so 90% uh, uh, fail, you say? So 10% succeeding? It's less than that, it's 4%. So only 4% of businesses will make it to 10 years. Pretty so pretty statistics, right? It's really interesting too, you look at that from the US, you look at that from New Zealand, Australia, it's all very similar. So you've got to ask yourself a question. What are you doing different? Are you following a pack? Or are you doing the forms that are doing? Are you doing something different in your business that's going to help you be successful? And most people will sadly say, oh, I'm just doing what everyone else is teaching me to do. Yeah. But if you're doing what the pack's doing, you'll be hardly 96%. Yeah. And what I'll show you here today is, in, this is only an hour long keynote, by the way, which I'm going to narrow down for the next 10 minutes. Yeah. But the key is, do what the successful are doing, and you'll create a successful business. And you've got to follow the four percent. That's my rule of thumb. So if you're sitting there thinking, yeah, great, I've been in business five years or whatever, and I'm heading towards 10, now's the time to challenge you think because at least 30 percent of that number that's still left is going to fall over right so we want to make sure we're thinking a little differently okay excellent now i always say if you just get one thing out of any presentation you've got to get it off yeah you don't need to have a whole paradigm shift about the way you're thinking if you pick up one gold nugget in every presentation you listen to you'll be a richer man or a person for doing so so think about Every time you get in a room like this and someone does an excellent presentation, you've got to be looking for that one nugget of gold and you can take away from it as well. So I guarantee you there'll be at least one of those today. So I've got seven Ps that uh, will help you be successful in your business and you'll build great value into your business. I'm going to headline most of them, I'll go a little bit deeper if you want to. But the first one, the first and most important thing that you need to be thinking about in your business as a business owner, who can tell me, is that's a P. Profit, very good, Sue. So the most important thing you should be thinking about in your business is profit. 
Now, a lot of you, and many of us in Australia especially, seems to be different in the US, but similar to Australia and New Zealand. When we talk about profit, people kind of go, oh, well, I'm not in business with a profit. I'm in business to change the world and make a difference. And I have all these philanthropic ideas about what I want to do. Yeah? Guess what you need to be able to make those dreams possible? Profit. You need a successful, profitable business. Now, the accountant in the room, they'll support me on this. They'll say that the number one reason your business exists is profit. In fact, that's the definition of business, right? To generate a profit. Yeah? It's not to make a loss, it's not to break even, it's to, it's to make a profit. Yeah? And to generate as much profit as possible. Yeah? And once you're generating profit, the great thing about generating profit is it builds the opportunities for you to do the things you want to do, to make the difference you want to make. Yeah? So if you've got these amazing philanthropic ideas about the way you want to change your local community or change the world, you can do it with the money you're generating your profit. You don't want to be spending money you don't have to do it. You want to be spending money you're generating as profit to do it. Now, here's where typically, and Matt's going to laugh me because he picked me up on this before as well, being an accountant for years. Most accountants disagree with this next step. Uh, because, you know, we're taught in high school, in university, in every textbook about a basic accounting equation that says that uh, if you look at the profit and loss statement, it says income, excellent, $2. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now you think, great, so just the rest of it is That's right. So the profit and loss statement says that income minus expenses equals profit, right? Don't write it down because it's wrong. Yeah? That's what the 96% of people think you're Yeah? It's not. So income minus expenses equals profit. Most businesses that think that way and run their business that way end up with no profit or a loss at the end. They spend money they don't have. Yeah? What we want to be thinking about is income minus profit equals expenses. Then we're spending what we've got left. We take out the essential profit first, out of our business, out of our cash, and then we spend what's left. It's much easier to spend what's left because you know what you've got to spend. Whereas if you spend it first before you take out the essentials, you won't actually have any left for the profit. Yeah, all the essentials at the end. So income minus profit. Take your profit first. Now, I'd love to have coined this, but unfortunately a guy got in before me named Michael McCallowitz. He wrote a book called Profit First, and it's guided the way I've run my businesses for many years, and it's fantastic. The book's called Profit First. The gentleman's called Michael McCallowitz. If you Google, just Google Michael Motorbike or Michael Motorbike. It brings up all the same stuff, right? Um, it's fantastic. It'll change the way you think about your business. If you run your business by the profit first system, you wouldn't have profit left over. Yeah? So profit first. That's the first P. Income minus profit equals expenses. Okay. Number two, the next thing we need to do in our business to create conceptual value is to think about our planning. So the next thing is planning. If you fail to plan, you fail, you plan to fail. Yeah, so you essentially, if you're not planning your business, you're, you're going to set yourself up for fail. Because it's like getting in the car, going somewhere where you don't know where you're going, but not using Siri to guide you along the way there and just going, oh, you know, what you said. Yeah, it doesn't work. Even now, I use Siri to guide me to places where I know I'm going because the series is going to get me there the fastest possible way to avoid the most number of falls, the most, you know, avoid the traffic jams, lots of stuff. My goal always is to beat series time. Yeah, if I know if I can, if I can get it's getting harder and harder, it's getting more accurate every time. And this is what planning does. It sets out all the milestones along the way to help you meet your goals. Yeah, if you set some goals, so if you set some goals, you shoot to the moon, you miss, you still land among the stars. And that's what goal setting is take them in the right direction. Even if you're off a little bit, it doesn't matter. You're heading in the right direction. It's really important. So planning. Now just quickly, planning should take place like this. So every day we should spend about two to five minutes planning for our day. We set three goals for today. What are three things that we need to do today that will take us to work the goals we'll set for the week? So we do that every day. Every week, we spend about five to ten minutes thinking about the top three things we need to do this week to take us towards our monthly goals. Every month, we spend about 15 minutes to half an hour setting three goals to take us towards our quarterly goals. 
And every quarter, we spend about half an hour setting three to five goals that it takes towards our annual goals. And then every year, we're going to spend maybe half an hour to a day. I, I actually take a day out of my business to set goals for my business for the next year. And I set three to five things, about five things generally. But I'm going to hit this year, my goals for this year. I also spend on that day the same amount of time looking at my five-year plan. How does this all fit into my five-year plan? And my five-year plan is often a mix of personal and business, and then the rest of it just on there. If you do that, you spend you know, some time each week, sorry, each day, each week, each month, each quarter, each year, and the five year plan as well, you would be amazed about the value that you drive into your business because you're hitting goals on a regular basis. Yeah? You miss a few, it doesn't matter. It's about having that consistent achievement along the way. Hit a few, you're heading in the right direction. So that's goal setting under planning. The third thing is promotions. P for promotions, that's the marketing of your business. Marketing is like the chairs or a leg. You should have at least four and at least five pillars in your business for your marketing pillars. Yeah? A chair with two legs, what happens to it? It falls over, right? It's like the marketing. So imagine you only have one or two legs on your marketing pillar, on your marketing chair, and one of them was networking, and one of them was Google, and then Google changes its algorithm overnight. Bang, there goes all your leads, yeah? What happens if there's a, you know, God forbid, some pandemic that uh, happens and you no longer meet face to face, yeah? And you're only networking face to face. Yeah, there goes another leg. Two legs fall out, the whole chair's gone, right? You've got no leads coming in. So your marketing has to have at least four legs. And those four, you get five here. The first one is uh, presence. And that's your digital presence. You've got to be online in your business. Online is such a great way to build your business because you can scale it. I love online digital marketing. We love online digital marketing, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Because we can drive sales by turning up the notch. We can keep cranking, keep cranking it, and we can scale and scale. It's great. So everything we do online is about generating leads, by the way. Yeah, it's not about selling. We're marketing our business online. We're driving for an engagement strategy. We're giving them education, content, everything to help them build their business. Uh, so it's a B2B. We want to give them the seven tips to this. We want to give them five strategies for this. Things that are going to take them in the direction of what they're offering, but you give them to offer free so you can build your list and you can continue to engage them. And if they're not interested, they opt out. It's good. If they are interested, they go further down the funnel to the point in the end of the funnel where they are the least number of people, but the hot leads, the leads that want to buy from you straight away. So you're talking to people that are ready to buy and ready to commit. Yeah? That's the whole purpose of a marketing funnel. Yeah? Lots of people at the top, narrows all the way down to the hot leads at the bottom. And just for clarity there, hot leads is not mean good looking leads, it means people that are ready to buy. Yeah? The next P is pavement. Don't underestimate the power of old school marketing. Wearing out the shoe leather, hitting the pavement, hitting the footpath, getting into local businesses. Oh, this is crazy. So when we launched BX in the US, we had a guy who flew over from Australia. Uh, he went over to the US. He went from door to door, every business. Hi, my name's Terry. I'm from a company called BX. We just launched here in the US. I'm just going door to door to find out more about the local businesses in the area because you might have some great connections and opportunities for people just want to know who's around. Um, tell me about what you do. So we had a conversation. They talked talk about all about their business. I was like, hey, well, I'd like to introduce you to some people. Can I share your breakfast at one of our breakfast meetings? They loved that. Along they come, along they join. Yeah, grew phenomenally. Why? No one else is doing it. No one does old school marketing anymore. No one's getting the footpath, talking to people. You know, we think that digital is the only way. Yes, it's great, absolutely, but it's not the only way. It's one pillar. Um, the pavement, the digital footpath, talking to local people is such a powerful way to do it. Yeah, it's like the expo, same deal, face to face, having that conversation with people is powerful. That's why I call it old school, because it's face to face. The next key that we've got uh, is partnerships. My favourite one. So what's the best type of partner to have in your business? It's a referral partner. Very good. 
companies, sort of. Not that anyone said, but referral partners are, are the best kind of uh, partners to have in your business. And where's the best place to get your referral partners? For you. Well, thank you. <laughs> I was going to say networking, but I'll take that anyway. Thank you very much. But uh, networking, of course, for yeah, so I would uh, highly recommend you come along too, although it may be pretty converted. But the best place to get partnerships is through networking. Ask people to introduce you warmly to people you can partner with. And referral partners are one of the highest ROI ways to partner with your business. Yeah. Uh, the next P is publicity. Uh, nothing beats free publicity for your business. Yeah, and most publicity should be free. There's a there's a uh, app called Source Bottle. Have you heard of that? Yeah. So Source Bottle. S O U R C E Bottle. dot com. dot au. Jump on there. Subscribe to that every day. You get a daily digest of experts you're looking for. Uh, they're looking for people just like you to contribute content, education, go on TV, the radio, all sorts of stuff. Um, they're looking for people to position as an expert so they can get in front of their audience. Yeah. So it could be just writing a blog on a website, it could be being on TV. It's all these opportunities. Every single day being pumped out to an audience. And all you've got to do is write some information about why you should be that person. That's a great that's a source model. And things like just jumping on podcasts are hugely uh, valuable for your business. Someone's gone to the effort, uh, Nick's got his podcast, he's gone to the effort, the expense, the time, the energy to build a list of people that tune into his show every day, week, month, yeah, hundreds of thousands of people, and then Nick wants digital experts to come on that he can make look really good, because if he makes them look good, he looks really good, and his audience loves him. Yeah. So there's lots of podcasters out there that are looking for it. Jump on, find out who they are, come to the network, say connect me with podcasters that you know. Yeah. Members of the network will connect you with podcasters that you know. But podcasts are right way to get us from a whole other audience of people that want to buy your product. And you don't even have to sell to them. You're going to make it look really good just by being on the show. There's lots of ways to get free publicity. But we should always be looking for ways to build our credit. Whether it's just doing blogs for other people, writing content for other people, jumping on podcasts, doing webinars, all sorts of stuff, great opportunity. And the last P in your promotions is your personal brand. And I've tacked this on as the fifth leg of the chair because it's really important. And often we underestimate the value of our personal brand. Because what happens is we build our business with us in it as a key person in our business. The challenge with that is that once we sell our business, we detract from the value by being the key person. Yeah? We're now essential to the business and the buyer will look at that and go, actually, you're a key person, you come out of it. So we need to build our business valuable outside of ourselves. We also need to build our business and build our personal brand alongside it. So concurrently with our business. So that when we do sell our business, because guess what? You're gonna leave your business like that. I have to tell you, you'll fall out of love with it and you'll wanna sell it, yeah? But when you sell it, wouldn't it be great to walk away from that business with a personal brand that has value as well? And it's incredible, because what it does is it opens doors for you everywhere. So all of a sudden, people are looking to do business with you outside of your business. Oh man, I want to show you that opportunity I've got. I want to talk to you about this. I want to have you on the show. I want to speak about this. You build a brand outside of your business, it'll pay you dividends for years to come outside of that. You're we'll looking to future opportunities for you and your business outside of the one you built. Does that make sense? So build your brand. Things like writing books. No, going on the podcast and all this stuff does that as well. But I recommend everyone should write a book position themselves as they go to personal in industry. It's a great way to start that personal branding story for yourself. Okay, I'm going to fly through these last five beats here because I'm definitely out of time. Excellent. Um, the next P is processes. You want to build great systems and processes into your business. Many of you would know that my background, I had a number of Subway franchises. Um, I got into Subway because I didn't want to have to go into a business and work it hard. I needed to work hard for me, and I wanted other people to be able to walk in and do the work for me as well. So I wanted to have a big team, and I wanted them to be able to do all the work and not to do without me having to stress about everything going on. And the best way to do that is have a franchise that has all the systems and procedures already done proven time and time again, yeah? So what we want to do for our business is create the same thing. We want to create 
a franchise model or a systems model of business that's easy to replicate. This adds huge value to your business. But another powerful sort of untold benefit of that is when you start to hire people, now they have a benchmark, an expected standard they can adhere to when they're working for you. Then you can reward them based on performance that they know where the benchmark is. It's great. They can hit it, they see it, and you can reward them based on that. And that creates a whole other sort of momentum in your business. So the next P leading from that is people. Once you've got that great framework in your business, people are essential. Yeah? So the people in our organization, like lots, we have great people doing what they do really well, yeah? So the great people so in the right seat, on the bus with you, on the journey with you. Because there's no way, have the right people on the bus, sitting in the right places on the bus, you can't take that bus somewhere great. And that's what you're trying to achieve in your business. You've got to have the right people. Um, the next P, once you've got great people coming to your organization, it's time to think about the performance culture of your organization. And how do you create a performance culture? You have purpose, you have values, and you have a vision for your business. Your vision tells people where you're going, where you would like to go in your business. Your purpose is your why. Why are you in business? Why are you doing what you're doing? That's the purpose of your business. And the values are like the, the runway lights that keep you on track, that help people know where to play. They're like the sidelines on the playing field. They help us play by the rules. Really important to all be on the same page with our values as well. That's performance culture. And the last P is passion. Yeah, I did say that to run a successful business, you had to love your business, and one day you fall out of love with your business, that doesn't happen. So if you're not passionate about what you do, it's time to move on. In fact, you want to be prepared with all this, so that when you do fall out of love with it, you can move on easily. Because this stuff builds the value to that, and allow you to sell that business with the value. So it's really important. I love what I do, I love this. I love the difference you make in people's lives. Um, I love that we're able to do that, not just in Australia now, across the globe. And uh, I love, I just love the people I work with, I love the members that, I, uh, that we have across the network, and I love meeting all people every day. And the crazy thing is, I'm an introvert. So actually, I normally, in a room of people, I, I hate to what I'm like, but in a network like this, I feel that we're just, there's a culture of just support, communication, love, collaboration, that really is powerful for a network. Um, so all people just fit in, and I think that's really great. And I, and I love it. So um, you can tell, love, boss, loves it too. Everyone, anyway, I've got to stop. Because next time, 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 next